this tutorial, we will speak about how to download Dawn. Then we will uh, explain how to input and calibrate a calibrant. Then we will learn about how to input, integrate, and output a data diffraction pattern. Also, we will explain how we can batch process large volumes of data uh, using the Dawn pipeline function. Let's start with the first part where we learn how to download Dawn and where to download it from. Um, in Google, type Dawn Science and search for Dawn Science. Then look for the website dawnsci.org. Click on the link and then click download. And then you will have three options to download for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Click any one of them. And the, the install file will be uh, downloaded. And then uh, click the install file. And then you will be guided to where you want to install it and um, all um, the required information until your program is down is installed in your computer. Once installed, uh, open Dawn, um, and then you will have uh, this. The, uh, if you open Dawn the first time, uh, you will have a blank uh, screen like this one. Um, now we what we need to do is we need to uh, go to Window. Go to Perspective, and then Open Perspective, and then Other. Window, Perspective, Open Perspective, Other. Then you will, um, uh, this following window will appear uh, that has all the different perspectives um, provided by Dawn. Another method to get to that uh, a window is to click this icon here which is open perspective just by clicking this icon you will get the same window for this tutorial we will need two perspective opened the first one is powder calibration so we'll click twice on that and then again click this button this icon or you go through window perspective, open perspective, other. The next one, the next perspective is processing. So now we have two perspectives opened and they appear in tabs as such. And you can switch from one perspective to the other just by clicking these tabs. In the powder calibration perspective, as the name suggests, here, we calibrate the calibrant and from and then we use this information to process our data let's start by inputting a calibrant here is my folder so you can either so the calibrant i will be using is lab 6 you can either drag the calibrant into the diffraction calibration control window, drag and drop here, or I can click this icon here and then navigate to where my calibrant is and it will be um, inputted. So these, there are two options. Once we have the calibrant um, um, loaded, uh, we will see that we have a um, few um, uh, windows uh, populated. So this window here is the fraction plotting is where we see our diffraction image. Here are all the parameters. And then in, in this image, in this uh, section here is where we select the calibrant or configure it. And we also have a few options. I will go through um, everything with you in this session. Uh, first thing first, we will need to see the diffraction pattern 
uh, we need a, a optimum way to see it because now, uh, because we have high um, intensity um, uh, speckles around the diffraction, we are unable to see the rings in our calibrant. To do this, we need to change the scaling. So we right click on this scale bar and then we go to configure histogramming and then we change the maximum intensity. This is very high, 65,000. So we change this. This is, of course, it's trial and error. Uh, try 1,000 if still the, um, the visibility is full, try 500 and so on. In my case, um, I uh, found that 500 is best for this file. So I just click, five, uh, I type 500 and click OK. Now, as you can see, uh, these um, the the calibrant reflection rings are now visible. Now I can start the calibration process. First, we will need to go to the powder diffraction parameters. We need to set the wavelength. So, in my case, it's eight point zero point eight two angstroms. And you can change the units there. So you can, uh, you don't have to convert the energy to wavelength. If you would like to put the energy straight away, you can just change the unit to KeV and select the energy. So in my case, it's 15 KeV. So you have these two options. Then we need to set the uh, distance uh, sample to detect the distance. So in our experiment, this was around 200. Then you set the detector. In our case, it was the MAR detector. Once we select the wavelength, the distance, and the type of the detector, uh, we can go to the next step. We have to set select the calibrant. In our case, it's lab six. It's already there. And also, we need to tell the program how many rings to use from inner. So this is our inner ring, as you can see in the image here. We can expand this image using this icon here. So this is our first ring. So from first ring, one, two, three. We have three reflections visible. Then click Escape to go back to the perspective and change that number to three. So this is the number of the rings that you can uh, see in your uh, diffraction pattern from the inner ring. Routine should be automatic and the point calibration should be uh, selected. Here we need to fix the energy uh, because we uh, this information was provided by um, the beam line in the synchrotron facility and it is accurate we don't need the program to refine it and masking um, is, is grayed out um, we can only see this um, I believe if manual was selected once we've done all these checks we are ready to run the calibration and we click this button run calibration And as you can see here, it's finding these, the first, found this first ring, then it found the second ring. It takes about 20 seconds and it's done. Right here, you see that it gives a report um, of the beam set of the wavelength, what's the wavelength? was the distance, the beam center in X and Y, the tilt uh, of, the of the detector, and, S, uh, and so on. And right there in the powder diffraction parameters, we see that the, the energy wasn't changed because we've set it to be, um, to not, we've set the program and the options to fix the energy, it was fixed. The distance was changed. Uh, so it was um, 30 millimeter off 
um, and don't worry if the type of detector was was changed because um, I will show you later how we can um, make sure that our calibration was successful. Um, so once we calibrated the sum the, the calibrant, um, we need to redo the histogramming. So right click because we can't see the rings anymore. We right click on the scale, configure histogramming. In my case, it's 500, and then OK. I can see the rings now. And then if I click this icon, it will expand the view. So what we are looking for here is that these red line, red, red circles should be uh, should um, um, overlay exactly the the diffraction or reflection rings, these Debye rings. They shouldn't be off, they shouldn't be smaller, they shouldn't be larger, they shouldn't be more oval, they should be should, they should overlay the reflections exactly, just like so. So that's the first check. We click escape on the keyboard to go back to the main menu. And then we uh we the next check would be uh, checking this graph right here, the, this plot. So again, we can expand this plot. So you see these lines right there. These are the calculated peaks of lab six. And then the blue line here, the, the blue plot, is the observed um, reflections from our data. And for a successful calibration, the calculated and the observed should be should should be exactly the same. And as you can see here, they are the same. So that's the second trick. Now we are happy that our calibration is successful. We click Escape to go back to the main menu. For the next step. In the processing section, we will need to use this information to calibrate our sample when we input um, the sample data. So now we this will you shouldn't worry if you switch between tabs because this will always be saved um, until you close the program. So if we go to processing now, this time we will start inputting the sample data, the sample diffraction patterns. Again, to input the data, we will need to open our folder. And here are five example data. You can, you can select them and drag them and drop them. Then you will um, have this window. This window will, will open, uh, showing you the diffraction pattern. And then you just click finish. Now you can scroll and see each of these diffraction patterns in this data slice view. And the diffraction pattern is in the input window there. This processing window is where we um, input or create our pipeline and right here is the output window this last window here is uh, has a table uh, where we can change the parameters of the processing functions and it will make it will all make sense as I start uh, creating the pipeline to create a pipeline we will need to click this star right here. Once we click that star, we will get all the, the available functions. Uh, instead of going through this function, we can type a function. So first, what we need to do is to calibrate our sample, input the calibration parameters that we just um, acquired. So we just write calibrate, calibration, and then we need to look for enter diffraction calibration. So this is the function we're looking for. We click on that. And now um, there is a bug in this version of Dawn where we don't see the 
uh, where this table doesn't update, I have to scroll down to see all the different parameters. But this shouldn't be a problem, hopefully, in, the, in future releases. But yeah, if you if you face this problem, if uh, you don't see the the function menu right there, then you just need to click and drag, and you will see all the menu. Um, then we need to input in here. We will need to input all the information from the uh, calibration that we just performed. So we go back to the calibrant. So the sample detector distance was 231.132. We copy that, so we click on that. We select this text, control copy, go to processing, and control paste at the detector distance. Um, then we'll uh, put the beam center in X and Y, so we'll go back to the diffraction beam center and X control copy and then control paste right there and then again copy and beam center Y paste the energy is 15 KeV so we just select it and just type 15 now these are the um, detector Yao pitch and tilt. So for Yao, we copy that and we go to Yao and paste that. Then we go to pitch and roll is zero. So we'll put pitch. Pitch is right there. And roll is zero as we mentioned. Now we've we've inputted all um our calibration parameter uh, here we also need to input one more thing which is the pixel size of our detector uh, in the case of the detector that we used in this example is 80 microns so this can be found in the detector spec sheet um, or can be given by um, the technician or beamline scientist once we are happy that we copied all this information, we're ready for the next step. So we can integrate the data both azimuthally and radially. So we'll start with radial integration. Um, as the name suggests, we just click on this star right here, the yellow star, and then we type radial and then here's the first option, radial integration. We click on that. And again, this wasn't updated, so I have to drag it to see it updated. Now, I will need to go back to the diffraction image. So to go back to the diffraction image, I, only, I just have to click on the first function, enter diffraction calibration. And I need to note the beam center X and Y, and I'll show you why. So we click on this. So once we click on the enter diffraction calibration, we see our diffraction image right there. We click on this icon right there. And then we go to profile and azimuthal profile. Then we go to the center of the diffraction image and then we drag it until the we um, we are at the required position where we which where where the the, the 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 reflection of interest is so that would be somewhere right there for us so i i decided so in this example we are interested in the zero zero two reflection which is this one right here so this this arc right here and this arc right there so that's the reflection we're interested in now we approximated the the beam center just to get to this profile so to put the exact beam center which is the number we got from our calibration we need to select this um, profile right click it so on the red, on the red area, we right click the red area and then we go to configure profile. 
then we will have this um, window right here and we just change this number right here so uh, the beam center x and y so beam center and x is this uh, value there so one zero two three point two oh four enter and then for y it's one zero nine point fifty eight enter one zero one nine point fifty eight and then we click apply or OK, same thing. So now this beam center has been, if we go to configure, this beam center has been updated to our calibrated beam center. Next thing would be to um, refine this area that we just drew on the diffraction pattern. Um, to have a better um, view of the diffraction image, we can uh, maximize this window. Now the it's it's much bigger, much clearer. Now we will I will need to go as close as possible to the reflection that I need. Here we are. So I am happy with. Yeah, as close as possible to the reflection. Here we are. I think we are fine like this. Then we will need to note, so we can minimize this window again. Then I have to right click on the red area, configure profile, and I will need to note um, this uh, these numbers here. So 5447.41. I'll just copy that. 544.741 and 577.007. And then OK. And then this go to radial integration. And then at the radial range, we select, we copy the number we just copied, and then the number we memorized, 577.007. So this is our radial limits. This is our radial range. That's the, the, um, the, the selected um, reflection that we just um, refined earlier. The, the area inside the red um, the red highlight and then we click enter so this is our radial range then we need to change the azimuthal range so this is the area we would like to analyze so in our case is from 0 to 360 we would like to analyze the whole circle the whole reflection from 0 to 360 so you type 0 uh, comma 360 and the same here you write the first range comma and the second range the log radial axis should be left unchecked the number of bins um, I will leave it at 1000 1000 is the most optimum one in my case and it should be in your case as well uh, so this is the most optimum one, and I'll show you what the radial the number of bins mean uh, as we are integrating our diffraction pattern. The x-axis, this should be the pixel number. Then when we click on the radial integration right now, we can see this is uh, the radial, the, the, um, the, the azimuthal curve of our reflection. And if we click on the different, as you can see here, as I scroll through the different fraction patterns, this curve changes. And this is an expected result. Um, now I would explain what number of bins mean. The number of bins means there will, sh uh, there will be less uh, pixels or less points showing. So you'll have less noise. This might be helpful in a very noisy data. 
So let's say instead of 1,000, I will input 100. You, you may notice the, the noise, how it will disappear. So I'll press enter. And then to um, to refresh this curve, I just need to press the radial integration again. Just click on it. Do you see that? Now we have we don't see the noise anymore if we do it at 100. But in my case, in our case, we need to preserve as much data as possible, even with noise. So we change that to 1,000 and click on radial integration. And this is the more raw uh, file. This now, this uh, plot right here can be saved by clicking this printer icon. You can export data to data file just as such. You select the, the folder where you want to save it. Um, and then select the add data and then save. Um, data, single, single add camera, you just leave everything um um as as they are here we don't need to change anything uh, if you prefer to save it as an excel file you can also do you can do so there and then finish and then your file should be saved right there as you can see here and can be fitted it can be analyzed further um using this data file Now, if we would like to um, do a batch processing of this whole process for all of these uh, diffraction patterns, um, we can tell the program to do that automatically. So if we click, so if we continue the pipeline, so we have a pipeline that calibrate the data and a pipeline that integrate our data. The third, pipe, the third uh, function of that pipeline would be to save this data as a text file. So just by typing text, if you type text here, then export to text file, you, this, this option will appear. You click on that, and then you will have a new uh, menu right here. It will ask you about the file extension. I would like it to be the, the, that in separate folder. No, unchecked, include explicitly explicit locations uncheck output directory so if you select that you just click here and then you select this icon and you select which which output you would like to uh, save it in so in my case i would like to save it in another folder so to save it in another folder we just go um in the folder i would like is in my desktop and it's in dawn test right there open uh, pad with zeros so this is the leading zeros mm, this should be just deleted I, I delete it because it's not going to help me because it's always going to have a zero at the end of the, um, at, the um, at the end of the file name uh, and, I, and i will explain later when we start the process then once we're happy with this pipeline, when we click on this uh, play button, it will do it will carry out these um, tasks one after another for all of the files that are in the data slice view. So if I click play, it will ask me it will ask me where uh, please select directory. So again, same as um, the directory we've set earlier we select dawn test desktop don't test in my case and then leave this unticked and you click ok this is very fast so five five data five of our diffraction patterns were saved and i can open dawn and as you can see here these are our data file and we'll also have a processed uh, files there. They, these are not important, so they can be deleted. Um, they are part of the program. They always appear uh, and, and access files. And as you can see here, uh, I've deleted the, uh, all of the uh, NXS files because they don't are they are not needed. Uh, 
and I keep the data file. So this is the data file for the first diffraction pattern. Again, for the second one, third one, and so on. So now we will learn how to uh, do a different type of integration, which includes the full diffraction pattern rather than a single reflection. To do this, we will need to remove, so to remove any of these functions, we click on the minus button there, and now it's removed. And then minus button again to remove the radial integration. Now we leave the uh, diffraction calibration because we are happy with, the, with our calibration parameters. But we need to insert a different function. This time is the azimuthal integration. We click on the azimuthal integration. And now we have a new set of um, parameters to input. So the azimuthal range will be again from 0 to 360 in our case because we would like to analyze the whole diffraction pattern. The number of bin again at 1000. Pixel splitting log radial axis would be left unchecked and then the radial range this one we will need to change. So if we go back, if we click on this function, enter diffraction calibration, we will go back to our uh, diffraction pattern. But this time, we do not want to integrate a single reflection. Rather, we would like to integrate the whole diffraction pattern as such. So we will need to note the new uh, radial limits. Uh, just as before, we right click and go to configure profile and then we need to note these new uh, uh, rad radial limits. So I will copy this one and I will memorize this one 9 so this is the first radial limit comma followed by the second radial limit and click enter then in the x-axis we need to change this into the pixel number now we are analyzing full diffraction patterns this type of analysis is used for um, um, to, can, to, to uh, carry out read field analysis, crystal size, and, and all different crystallographic uh, analysis. And if we move, if we go to the data size view and move uh, to different um, diffraction patterns, we can see the different um, uh, diffraction plot. Again, to save this, uh, we can either go into this floppy disk image and we can export data. And if you want to save it as a data file or you can save it as an Excel sheet, you can do so by selecting one of these um, uh, uh, ticks. We want to save it in this case as a data file. We'd like to save it in this folder right there. Uh, we don't we, we select single and select single x column then finish now um, this uh, plot was saved uh, individually now if we would like to save uh, everything in the data slice view we can add to the pipeline another function so we click on the star uh, same as before we type text, choose the first option, export to text file, and then 
the file extension data, leave these unchecked, output directory. So we'll um, um, output into the same uh, directory, but uh, now it's uh, it's going to overwrite. So it will overwrite if you have any um, 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 file with the same name, it will overwrite. So to to avoid that, if you remember when we selected uh, zero, uh, we didn't select we selected zero pad with zeros. Uh, now we'll select two, so we can distinguish between the two, so it wouldn't overwrite. So we can put two. This will add two zero at the end of the file. Um, at the moment, we are ready to um, start the process. So we click on play. Uh, make sure that this um, is exactly this uh, directory is exactly as the one we just set here, and then we click OK. Now this should have all the data saved. So as you can see here, this is our uh, data from the single deflection analysis with one zero. And this is the uh, full diffraction pattern analysis ready for read well refinement, which has two zeros. We click it and here's our, our data. Now, we come to the end of this uh, tutorial. We learned how to download Dawn, how to input and calibrate the calibrant, and how to input, integrate both azimuthally and radially uh, sample diffraction pattern. And how we, we learned also how we can batch process uh, large volumes of data uh, by creating uh, a pipeline in the uh, processing processing perspective. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you in part two of this tutorial.